So um, the next five minutes, I'll just give you a bit of an overview of what AMP is all about and cover a couple of, sort of projects that we've been uh, involved in in uh, designing medical implants. Uh, as Martin mentioned this morning, uh, so RMIT's strategy in advanced manufacturing is really reflected in this facility. Uh, the facility was opened in uh, late 2011 um, and to undertake fundamental and applied research in, uh, in particular additive manufacturing right? and to, I guess, support new industry capability. So that's what we're all about. Uh, it complements other advanced materials and manufacturing facilities, RMIT. Uh, it's a unique in Australia in the sense it covers both metal and polymer systems and you'll see that upstairs um, I think after lunch. Right? Uh, so we sort of promote ourselves as a one-stop shop uh, to industry. And these are the range of printers that we've got, and you'll see them upstairs. So uh, both polymer printers, FDM, these are large printers, SLA, uh, Polyjet, and then we've got two uh, metal machines. These are powder bed systems, and we also got a large uh, trump machine downstairs, so we can do very, very large uh, components. Um, in addition to that, we've got three and five axis machining centers and we work very closely with companies like uh, Okuma. We've got a partnership agreement with them. Uh, last year, so that's the facilities, and then last year we formed a center, so this is the people. Uh, we currently have 10 academics, ranging from sort of senior lecturers to uh, professors. Uh, and we've got 12 uh, PhD students working in different areas of uh, additive technology. Uh, we're focusing in two areas in particular. So design, and this is the, the topology optimization. Um, you'll see some of these examples upstairs. Um, things like this. So the components that we, uh, we worked with DMTC and Lockheed Martin where we take about 50% of the mass of the, of the material. Well, somebody said this is my crown. <laughs> this is a project with <laughs> BAE <laughs> systems. Put it on. Put it on. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an aerospace component, uh, working with BA, BAE systems, where we took about 49% uh, of, the, of the mass of the part. Do you want to pass it yeah, yeah, sure. That's, this is aluminum. And this is titanium. <coughs> And we're targeting opportunities in, in sort of high customization and complexity in this industry. So aerospace, biomedical, defense, mining, and instrumentation. The focus very much here is on developing new IP, right? Because um, I think anyone can buy a printer. And it's in particular, if you're looking at you know, China, I mean, they're, they're growing in this particular area. So how do we differentiate ourselves, uh, I guess, from overseas um, organizations? and to some extent also local, local universities. So we're trying to uh, develop IP and we are developing and, and we've got a couple of patents in the, in the, in the process. So in terms of our research, um, we are basically, in, in, this is in design area, so if you look at conventionally machined uh, component out of a billet of titanium, right? We're developing the tools, software tools, that will allow us to go from there to the part that's just you know, going around, okay? Uh, where we can reduce the mass, but we can obviously maintain the, the structural integrity of that uh, of the comport, uh, component and the, the, the crown as well. Right? Uh, so, and this is where the IP lies, so in designing the, the software tools for this application. Uh, the other uh, project in, in the biomedical space is, is working with uh, Professor uh, Peter Chung at St. Vincent's, and we've got a PhD student, uh, myself and Martin, and uh, Peter approached us a couple of years ago. Um, he does a lot of cancerous bones, uh, where uh, currently he either removes the whole limb or a sig uh, significant part of the bone, and then he uses conventional implants, which are bulky and there are a whole range of issues. So he wanted to know whether he can just resect the, all right, if I get the printer going, the cancerous part of the bone, and for us to design him an implant that would fit exactly into that space, 
and carry the same load as the bond that's been removed. Okay? Uh, and we're really well advanced uh, in that space. We can now sort of design and make implants like this. And there's lots of smarts in, in, uh, in that space. It's how do we build these lattices, you know, how do we then uh, 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 look, look at the, the load aspects. The other issue with that is that you can change the nature of, of, the, of the hospitals. The hospitals can become the manufacturing sites by having a printer downstairs or wherever in a clean room. Uh, the surgeon can cut out the bone, they can scan the bone, and send the file to the printer, and the, uh, the guys downstairs can print it. Um, we've now tailored this, so the idea is that, I guess, we want to be able to design and print the implant while the patient is on the operating table. So you're looking at about six to eight hours, and we are really well advanced in, the, in that space. So we'll be able to, I guess, within the next couple of years, print in time, just in time, the, these implants. So the strategy for us in this space was, I guess, generate uh, a scan of the bone, then extract the volume, uh, or resect the volume, and then based on that volume and the load, design, this, um, uh, design the lattices. And as I said, we, we can do that now. Uh, we've created a GUI. So it, it, you don't need three PhDs to run these things. You need a technical op uh, officer effectively. He can then punch in the, the, the type of latches that he wants, the, the diameters of the struts, the materials, and the, uh, uh, the design is sort of, uh, I guess, generated, and then that design can go onto the printer. Uh, we've used this technology uh, about four months ago. We were approached by Anatomics to see if we can create a, um, a bespoke uh, implant for a, for a patient with a congenital spinal defect. Um, this was a lady, I think she was about 40. Um, she had this problem, obviously, uh, all her life. Gave a lot of pain, and the standard operation would involve, I don't know if you can see this, but sort of chipping a lot of the vertebrae and then sort of trying to fit uh, standard implants which, uh, which are parallel sided. Uh, Anatomics came to us and said, okay guys, you know something about these lattice structures? Can you manufacture us an implant that would fit exactly into that space? Um, and we did that and the, uh, it went into the patient about four months ago and uh, there was a big story that came out a couple of weeks ago where obviously it's been a, quite a successful operation. So the implant itself Based on our lucky designs and sort of the IP in that space that we uh, we're developing new implants. So Anatomics is looking at, at a couple of other implants and, and we're working with them. And they'll be sort of coming out in the next the next six months. So um, in terms of our collaboration over the last, I guess, four years, we've we work with many people, local and overseas. And um, I mean, this is only a couple of projects that I'm showing you here, but there's a whole range of uh, sort of products that we've got upstairs, um, and we've um, uh, I guess de developed with companies. I mean, one of the issues, and hopefully, is Goran, you'll come out of this workshop. So, one of the issues that that I see in the additive space is not just sort of RMIT, but you got CSRO and and others. We do a lot of work with companies. And then, then, you know, we develop the technology and it gets up to the next level, which is the board level or somewhere else, and someone's going to make that investment. So how do we translate that or this technology into, into commercial product, right? And I think that's where the challenge for, for us as a, as a group is, right? So on that note, I'll stop. Thank you.